Players in Hypixel Skyblock make the money in a multitude of different ways. Spanning all across the map, players try to diversify their methods to make the most money they possibly can. But understandably, money making at the start of the game looks very different to money making at the end of the game. And throughout your Skyblock journey, it's almost guaranteed that you're going to try a lot of different methods getting there. Some people try to make a lot of coins just simply through knowing the market and knowing what to do in order to make profit. Other players might choose a different route that may be a little bit more fun or engaging. Other players are absolutely insane and enjoy pain. But there's one common factor that brings everybody together. And that's the one to ultimately see a big number in your bank account. Anyway, today we're going to take a look at some early, mid and late game money making methods. Before we do, if you are planning on purchasing anything from the Hypixel store, make sure to use code NITROS and get yourself 5% off. Also, you should subscribe to the channel, it does help out a lot. We're actually attempting to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of next year. We have 13 months, it's going to be close, so if you could subscribe, that would help out a lot. And finally, you should join the Discord server, it's linked in the description of this video. We offer Slayers and Dungeon Carries, so if you need carries or want to carry and make some coins, make sure to join. Okay, let's start off with some early game money making methods. I'm going to try my best not to suggest the most standard money making methods just because number one they're really saturated and number two they're usually quite well known about and probably relatively boring because you've probably already, already actually tried them. First of all a word on the bazaar and the auction house. The bazaar and the auction house are a great tool to make coins. Um, both um, the bazaar and the auction house obviously are basically just marketplaces where you can buy and sell items. And to cut a long story short, you, the idea is just to buy low and sell high, and that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go into any more detail. Bizarre flipping is a thing, auction house flipping is a thing, investing items and waiting for them to rise is obviously a thing. Um, I'm not going to go into them in much detail at all. The reason I mention it is because the auction house is accessible straight away, and the bizarre only needs Skyblock level 7. Okay, so honestly, one of the best money-making methods at the start of the game, in my experience, um, takes you to the end. So you need combat level 12 to enter the end. It's nothing massive, it's relatively easily obtainable in just a couple of hours, maybe even less. Now, the idea is that you just want to look around the end, and you'll notice that some blocks have particles coming from them, so if you do have particles turned off, then you might need to turn them on. Like this block right here. Uh, take a pickaxe, mine the block, okay. Um, and this is called an end node. Um, so right here. Ender node you found enchanted enderstone. It goes straight to a mining sack. But there's lots of different items that you can actually drop from these end nodes. Um, so another item, obviously, more enchanted obsidian, enchanted endstone. Uh, you can also uh, drop grand experience bottles and titanic experience bottles from them too. Okay, so sometimes um, when you mine an end node, they spawn endermites, and these endermites give you mite gel. Now, it's really important that you kill these endermites and don't just run away from them because they might be slightly difficult to hit. Really, you should kill them because realistically, from these end nodes, that is the, is the best money maker. Um, you, sell, you can sell them straight to the NPC. Um, and um, yeah, like I said, that's the main money maker. Yeah, you can also drop a piece of equipment, I believe, that you need um, in order to actually... Um, I think it's complete the quest line. Is it to get the dragon short bow or the void sword? it requires you to have a full set which means you need to drop the full set which includes the um equipment too but yeah the idea is that you just run around the end and mine as many of these as you possibly can as quickly as you possibly can um it'll start to become really profitable really quickly um and all you really need is a pickaxe and um a sword of some description to maybe kill the enderman um, if you face them uh, you can sell the might gel to the uh, bazaar too but just from i think i've mined maybe about 10 and I made like 600k and that took me literally seconds. The great thing about this method is you can do it on Iron Man 2 because you don't really need to sell anything to the bazaar. Um, the XP bottles, I mean the Titanics do sell for a decent amount and a regular profile to the bazaar. But at the end of the day you're going to need them on Iron Man anyway so it is pretty good. You can make around about 5 million coins from this with literally just a pickaxe. So really not too bad. 5 million coins an hour should I say. Another early game money making method um, is just farming. It just is really good at the start of the game. There's no other way to put it. With around about a thousand fortune, simply farming a crop like melons is probably going to make you between eight and nine million coins an hour, which is really quite good. In my experience, farming something like mushroom could actually potentially make you more at around about 10 million coins per hour. Of course, your return is pretty much 100% dependent on your farming fortune. Of course, you can enhance your farming fortune with talismans and accessories, armor, um equipment, enchantments, tools, and so on. 
I feel like farming is relatively self-explanatory and I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to actually farm because I feel like that is relatively simple. Um, it's much more efficient if you have like a mega farm built. Um, but if you are new to the garden, then I guess you'd probably be better off watching a guide to the garden. So you can quite easily make at least 10 million coins per hour with not an amazing setup from farming. Now, something you can do, and this is interesting right now because Bingo is currently on and it's on for 13 days. Um, if you've watched my channel for a while, you probably know about this because I've mentioned it in the past. But it's so, so, such an insanely good money making method. Essentially, what you do um, is you start a Bingo profile. Um, and you go to the garden um, and I'll, let me explain now on the garden there's so many different visitors that can visit you um, each visitor potentially giving you something unique the most profitable visitor to get by far is the librarian the librarian can give you different enchanted books the best one being dedication four each dedication four book selling for around about 110 million coins on the bazaar to maximise our chances of getting as many dedication books as we possibly can, we need a new profile because most people are already progressed on the garden. Um, if you're not progressed at all, then great, you can do this on your main profile. The idea is that when you start a new profile, of course the garden is completely reset. And of course to get visitors to actually visit you, you have to actually talk to the NPC for them to visit to you. Um, and if you've not talked to them, then they won't visit. And we all know, um, you have five visitors. The idea is that basically you talk to just a few visitors um, and one of them being the librarian which means that if you've spoken to um, five visitors or under um, there's only a certain amount of these that are in the pool so that means that essentially you can just cycle through the librarian's offers and the librarian will have to come back every single time um, because there's no one else to actually visit um, essentially you can just farm dedication four books the reason I mentioned the bingo profile um, is just simply because if you already have progression on the garden and you've spoken to more than five visitors, um, then this isn't going to work efficiently because the librarian isn't going to visit every single time there's a new visitor. On a new profile, you can obviously dictate how many people you've spoken to and therefore you can get the librarian to visit every time. Now, of course, if you do this on another random profile, you, I mean you're not realistically you can potentially get banned if you transfer items um because you're not supposed to do that but on a bingo profile there's a built-in feature because the profile gets deleted um that you can transfer 10 items so you've actually got a potential of being able to transfer 10 dedication four books from your bingo profile to your main profile which is quite easily doable over the course of 13 days 10 dedication four books is 1.1 billion coins and I'm not saying you even need to do this. Even if you just get one dedication four book and transfer it to your main profile and sell it on the bazaar, that's 110 million coins. The librarian will always require sugarcane, so essentially it's the you're going to be the most productive if you just spam rush sugarcane from the start of the garden. You will need to maybe set this up. It might take an hour or so, but it is worth it. And you might be thinking, how could an early game money making method be this good? And I guess that's actually a good question it's 100 percent doable early game considering the way that you actually do it is by starting a profile that has nothing at all so i mean there you go you can do this at any stage of the game to be honest but you can 100 do it at early game okay now moving on to mid game money making methods and honestly this is a little bit of a tricky one because a lot of things that you can do when you're quote unquote mid game you can also do it early and late game so I guess it depends as to how early or late you are into mid-game. It gets quite confusing. Now the guidelines dictating whether you're mid-game or not can actually basically be spelled out by the Skyblock guide because it can kind of tell you where you're up to in the game. Having said that, there's people that have substantially more resources that may be way less progressed and also the other way around. So it's not completely accurate all the time. So the first method I'm going to talk about is actually going to take us to the Crystal Hollows. And you might think, well... Surely he's not going to say mining for mid game, and I guess you could maybe make an argument for it if you completely rush it. But the vast majority of players are probably not going to be mining for money efficiently um, in quote unquote mid game. But what you can do for money um, mid game in the crystal halls is prepare routes for other people to make money, which also makes you money. The colo story short in the crystal halls, the gemstones respawn in the same spot every single time. Um, 
this is irrelevant of the lobby. They they always spawn in the same place. Now, structures can sometimes get in the way of them, which can obviously impact um, your rates if you're trying to mine the gemstones because it's not ideal to be trying to traverse through a structure. However, it's um, quite easy to, to memorize considering they always spawn in the same place. So what you can potentially do is you can mine roots. Now, obviously, when people mine gemstones, um, when they want to be mined efficiently, they ideally don't want to be mining through loads of hardstone themselves to get to the next vein of gemstone. Ideally, they'll be able to see it. They can have mods that tell them where it is, but they can just walk or fly straight to it. You know, well, not fly, but walk. Now, there's a, there's a huge market um, for people buying roots. Um, and essentially, a route is just a route between gemstone vines veins um, depending on um i guess who you sell to um and how good your route is you can make between 20 to 50 million coins per route which is crazy considering it might take you 20 30 minutes to set the route up for someone um it's quite mindless to be honest because if you learn the route as well um then it's just essentially doing the same thing over and over again in different lobbies um yeah there's a few things to watch out for Obviously, getting scammed could be a slight issue considering the transaction is obviously going to take place over trades. I don't know how this would take place, but I'd just say be careful. And also, maybe if you're potentially inexperienced in this field, people may try to take advantage of you for not really maybe having too much knowledge about how much you should be selling your route for. Um, so maybe a bit of research before doing this would probably be useful. Now, up next, um, we have dungeons. Um, now, don't get me wrong, you can 100% make a lot of coins from dungeons in early game if you're lucky, and the same with late game. Honestly, the same goes for mid game. However, realistically, early game, your best option to make money probably isn't going to be dungeons, and the same for late game. So I feel like it probably fits better into mid game. After all, mid game is around about the time where you start to do floors like floor 7, uh, which could obviously potentially bag you a lot of coins. Now the main issue with dungeons is, of course, making money is RNG based. If you look at other things that I've mentioned like farming, um, or maybe selling roots, um, neither of them are RNG based. I mean, farming, I guess maybe to an extent is RNG based, maybe dropping fermentos, um, maybe getting the crazy rare drops from farming melons, but for the most part, even minus the, the good RNG, you can still make a good chunk of money per hour. Whereas if you have bad RNG from dungeons, you could potentially make nothing in hours. Probably not realistic, but it's, it's possible. Now, something that is pretty consistent in dungeons is frag running. Now, this is almost a myth, something of the past, but it is still good. Essentially, the play is to do floor 7, do a solo floor 7, rush to uh, the blood room, kill the giant in the blood room, and you have a chance to drop the diamante's handle. Now, the Diamante's handle has dropped actually a fair bit in price because I feel like a lot of people have been doing this method recently. Nevertheless, you can still get around about 1.1 to 1.2 million coins um, every time you drop it, which really isn't too bad. Anyway, like I mentioned before, mid-game is a bit of an awkward one considering a lot of the methods could also be considered early game, but also late game at the same time. So on that, we're going to move on to late game. Uh, and the first money-making method for late game is just straight up mining gemstones. I didn't want to mention it, but I don't see how I couldn't, considering it is probably one of the best, most consistent money-making methods in the game and has been for some time. Players regularly make upwards of 50 to 60 million coins per hour, and in peak conditions, you know, when the uh, Fiesta is on and everything like that, players can easily make over 100, 120 million coins an hour, which is absolutely ridiculous. But of course, that doesn't just happen overnight. You need all the best gear. You need, you need great Devan's armor, which is not cheap at all. Of course, Heart of the Mountain Tier 7. You need a Devan's Drill, which is close to 2 billion coins. Well, if you go for a, a really good one, of course, you're going to want a really good one if you want to be making the most money. And honestly, that's just scratching the surface. You're also going to need good powder, which isn't money. It doesn't take money to get powder. It just takes, I guess, a lot of your time. I mean, it's a lot better than it used to be, considering you can open the chest in just one tick rather than five as it used to be. So it's nowhere near as painful. Um... But there's a lot to consider. And I will say, while the other money-making methods that I mentioned in this video could be potentially better than this, this is by far the best money-making method for Iron Man, bar none. Full stop, that's as simple as it is. I don't really feel like there's too much else to say. Um, I'm not qualified to give you a guide on this subject. There's many other videos out there that you could definitely go and watch. Um, 
that will explain much better than I ever could. Snow in the Crimson Isles looks very strange. Yeah, that seems better. You might have guessed the next money making method is in the Crimson Isles. And to be honest, the next two are. First, it's as simple as this. Kudra is ridiculously good for money making. And of course, yes, partially it is RNG. However, there's quite a few constants that you get every time you open a chest. For example, an increasing amount of Crimson Essence that you actually get from each chest. Which in a lot of cases, especially when you start doing tier 3, essentially makes you break even pretty much straight away. Now, of course, from the, uh, from the chests from Kudra, there's a ton of different items that you can drop. Um, some of the main money makers include pieces of armor and pieces of equipment because you can roll attributes on these pieces of armor or equipment. Um, in turn, the really good attributes, i.e. the god rolls, can make you a lot of coins. Even in something as simple as getting like a dominance piece of armor at the moment can make you a lot of coins because dominance is really expensive on pretty much anything. Now, of course, the higher the tier, um, the more chance you've got at getting better items, essentially. So, in theory, the more coins you make. Um, from my testing, um, I've made around about 35 million coins per hour from tier 3 Kudra. Somehow made 92 million coins per hour from tier 4. Currently in the process of calculating for tier 5. That isn't going to happen every single hour uh, that you play Skyblock or that you do Kudra. But that is just giving you an idea of potentially how many coins you can make. In turn, the setups that you need in order to do Kudra are not cheap at all. Of course, sometimes you can go a bit overkill, like I probably have for a lot of the tiers here. Um, but it's not a cheap endeavor at all. For the higher tiers, you're going to most definitely need a Hyperion, Terminator, Overflux. Um, a pretty nicely upgraded set of Aurora. It doesn't need to be God Roll, but it's still going to cost you a lot of coins. And the same with Terra, probably a Warden Helmet. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot to take in. And of course, you're going to need decent magical power too to even be able to survive or deal any damage. Having said that, in my opinion, Kudra has got to be one of the best money-making methods in the game, bar none. And uh, last of all, we have Blaze Slayer. Uh, Blaze Slayer can be ridiculously good for money-making, and when you look at it on face value, it doesn't actually seem that good, because a lot of the drops that you can potentially get, even the best drops, are nowhere near as expensive as the best drops that you can drop from other Slayers. But what makes it so good are the drop chances of all of the drops. These drop chances of the relatively expensive items are way, way, way higher of that from any other Slayer. Comparing that to something like Zombie Slayer, you can see these drops are way, way, way more difficult to obtain. Basically meaning that you're going to hit the expensive drops in Blaze Slayer much more often than you would in any other Slayer. You're not going to make as many coins every time you hit those drops, however, that's going to add up to way, way more coins, trust me. Now, it's got to be noted that Blaze Slayer is not the easiest Slayer to complete. If I'm being honest, I don't think it's as hard as people probably perceive because it's in the Crimson Isles. Once again, it's not exactly a cheap endeavor. Having said that, um, for something like the tier three daggers, which used to be over a billion coins each, they've now dropped substantially in price to a point where it is quite affordable. Now you're gonna need essentially both daggers to complete um, tier four blade slayer at its maximum efficiency. However, Instead of paying a billion coins per weapon, now you're paying maybe 200 mil. So it's much more affordable, the barriers to entry are much lower, and you can still make a ton of coins. Granted, everyone is raving about Blade Slayer at the moment, and people know how good it can be for money. Therefore, I guess it has taken a little bit of a hit in recent times, but it's still ridiculously good. It's another one where I guess it is RNG based, but at the same time, because the drop chances are statistically so high, um, it is relatively nailed on that you're going to make a lot of coins, people making way over 50 million coins per hour. But anyway, that's going to just about wrap up today's video. I hope you all have enjoyed. If you have, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.